Good morning, evening, afternoon, midnight, night, whatever it is, to all of you, our dear friends at Crazy Talks with Wise People. Today, our edition is kind of refreshing. We have someone from South Africa, and she is a Christian educator. She has about 10 years experience being an educator at uh, a Accelerated Christian Education. Um, she has been involved in several overreaches internationally, and she's been serving the Lord. She loves the Lord, and uh, her humility and kindness is so touching that you cannot say no to God once you hear this lady speak about the reality of God in her life and in the lives of those people who God has anointed to follow him through her. Now, let's all welcome a wonderful person, a beautiful lady, Talitha. You know, she's, she, she, she uh, this is kind of surname that is hard to pronounce, but I'll try. Her name is Talitha Putgator. Did I pronounce your surname right? Thank you. This from That's South perfect. Africa. Warm welcome. Please welcome our viewers. Awesome. Thank you. I'm good. Okay, please welcome them if you wish to. Okay, Talitha. Um, I was wondering. Um, if you could tell us who is God in your life and, you know, how would you know that God is real? Because, you see, he's, he doesn't come to you or to me or to us in flesh and blood. We don't see him. He's invisible. But how would you know that he's real? Who is he? And how would you know the proofs that he's real? There. <laughs> okay. So I want to start with a few analogies, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and for example, if, if I were to show you an apple today, mm -hmm. I, would, I would to ask you, where does this apple come from? What, what would you answer me to that? From the apple tree. From the apple tree. Okay. And, and at first glance, it might sound very like a very simple answer, mm -hmm. but think about it. Have you seen the apple tree? Have you seen the specific apple tree that that apple came from? But how do you know that that apple came from a tree? Because I've seen it. Because you've, but have you seen that specific apple tree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you seen that, if that, this apple that I'm holding, just have you seen that specific apple tree? That you're, well, yeah through photos uh, and through some of the pl apple plantations here, yeah. Okay, so now let's go a little bit, let's go a little bit deeper. Now the apple tree, mm -hmm. the apple tree, how do you, you said you know that there's an apple tree, but first that apple tree was a seed inside yeah. an apple, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that seed had to come from somewhere. So how do you know that that apple tree came from a seed? Well, through science classes, you know, by planting trees itself. Yeah. Planting trees itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's go another step a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. If I were to say, okay, you know where the apple came from. Mm -hmm. The apple came from an apple tree. The tree came from a seed. Mm -hmm. Where did the seed come from? From the apple tree. <laughs> from the apple from the tree. Fruit. <laughs> from the fruit. But then you see, it creates it creates a circular, it creates a circular argument. Mm -hmm. But in essence, it had to begin somewhere. They had to begin from nothing. Mm -hmm. From nothing, they had to be something there had to be an intelligent force around and before all creation mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. 
we cannot we cannot look at ourselves as a human being mm -hmm. as a human being we have a spirit we have a soul and we have a body that has been scientifically um proven that we have yeah. a spirit we have a soul, and we have a body mm. we cannot look at that and say that that was not created as far as going back the first human beings cannot look at that and say but all of that just happened out of itself. There had to be some kind of order. There had to be some kind of um, intelligence behind the creation and put together and structure of all of this. But I think the main thing is that is God real? Look, God is definitely, he's real. And he will be real till in the end of time, until eternity. Our part in this, I think the question we should ask is, who is God? He is real, but who is he? And there's multitudes of multitudes of multitudes, places in the word of God where he revealed himself, where he revealed himself to people, where he himself revealed himself to people. But the question is that, who is God and we know he's and how do we know he's real? Is we have to look around us. We have to look around us and accept the fact that you and I sitting here today, being able to talk, being able to think, being able to be um, a, a human being, that behind that we needed to come from somewhere. We needed to come from the source. And mm -hmm. that is God. Mm -hmm. That is God. Um, the other thing is when we must remember that the book of John says, the book of John says that in the beginning, before all time was the word Christ and the word was with God and the word was God himself. And he was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it. Became man, a servant from God, whose name was John. Now, if we just read that first passage in um, John 1, we, we, we already see and we already start to, start to acknowledge that we cannot use the argument of, is God real? And is God invincible? Because the word did become flesh. Through Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ, fully God, born of a virgin, born of, um, born of Mary, fully God, fully man, he came to make himself visible for humanity. He came to make himself physically in the flesh visible to humanity. And he's also the only one who never who lived a sinless life. So that is how I know that he is God. That is how I know that he is real. If you look at all the other religions, there is not one, there's not one other religion's God who came to manifest himself in the flesh mm -hmm. for all humanity. There's mm -hmm. only one, the God of Adonai, the God of Isaac, Jacob, and um, yeah, Abraham. Mm -hmm. who came to manifest himself through a physical human being, Yeshua Mashiach. Mm -hmm. There is countless of records. There's countless of records proven that that man, Yeshua Mashiach, did walk on the earth. His mm -hmm. disciples saw him. The mm -hmm. Pharisees saw him. The synagogue saw mm -hmm. him. The mm -hmm. sinners saw him. Mm -hmm. it, that's, there were that's testimonials about these These physical testimonials of God in the flesh manifesting himself for all humanity to see. Mm. Even right through his cross, even right through, mm. through his crucifixion. Mm. He said, he prophesied. All the prophecies of him, by the way, did come true to a T mm -hmm. for anybody that wants to really study. Mm -hmm. But even in his death and his resurrection, mm -hmm. he prophesied and he said in three days, mm -hmm. three days. You can break this temple off, but in three days, mm -hmm. I will build it up. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And there's accounts, more than 500 accounts. After his death, that he risen, that he res that he is resurrection, mm -hmm. of his resurrection, of his risen state, just before he ascended to heaven. Mm -hmm. So not only this is this is the this is the marvelous part. Nobody can show me any other person in humanity who was able to, after death, manifest himself in that kind of a way. And now I'm not talking about familiar spirits. I'm not talking about demons posing as spirits. I'm talking about that they that they could literally, literally that the Messiah spoke to them and said, okay, well, I'm about to ascend. And this is my last commandment that I leave to you. So not only did he come in the flesh and he revealed himself, God in the flesh and the word in the flesh. He also came and he revealed himself in his risen state just before he ascended. And he will also reveal himself in his kingly state when he comes to when he comes again, when he comes again on the on the on the cross. Now the first 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 time he revealed himself was as a baby in Bethlehem. Okay. It was um he was an he was an infant. He suckled on his mother. He came with one purpose and one purpose only. And that purpose was okay not just one purpose sorry but he came he came with the purpose to reconcile to reconcile humanity with god number one being god in the flesh himself secondly he came to show us the way and to teach us and to 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 clearly give us markers of how we are supposed to go forward in our life what we need to understand is, is when he reveals himself again and I think this is where people get confused. That how do we know God is real? Yeah. Because listen to this. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. When God revealed himself in the flesh, he had a purpose. Mm -hmm. He had a purpose. And his purpose was to reconcile humanity with, um, with God. Mm -hmm. When God comes to reveal himself again on his mm -hmm. second coming, mm -hmm. He's going to reveal himself as king, as lord, as ruler mm -hmm. of everything. And I think that's where people get get, get very bit um, um, misconcepted because they were, as, as with the Pharisees, they were waiting for God to reveal himself as king, as ruler, you know, mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. subject everything under him. Yeah. And at that time, and at that time, that was not his main purpose. That was not his main goal. Yeah. But if he comes again, mm -hmm. he's going to reveal himself in that manner. So mm -hmm. what am I saying? Even in the revelation of God, if we can ask, is God real? Have we seen him? What is he to you? Even in that question, the revelation of God is not yet fully complete. Mm -hmm. I want to I wanna, <laughs> say that again. For us as humanity, mm -hmm. even in a revelation of God mm -hmm. is not yet complete to the full extent that he is going to reveal himself mm -hmm. to humanity. Mm -hmm. But we need to, I almost want to say we need, as Christians, as born-again believers, we need to get a wake-up call in this fact that we need to start seeing him as that king. We need to start seeing him as that, as that, uh, um, as ruler and reign, reign of everything. Mm. And so he revealed himself in the flesh. All right. First of all, God revealed himself as the creator of everything. If you read the book of Genesis, you go way back. Then with the with Jesus Christ, he came to reveal himself in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay. But even in that revelation, people still don't still didn't recognize him. Now, God, when he was on the cross, he did another thing. And that is he revealed himself through his Holy Spirit. He revealed himself through the Holy Spirit. So he came and he said, okay, from now on, 
henceforth I'm sending you my Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So not only did I reveal myself as creator, not only did I reveal myself physically in the flesh to you, but I'm now revealing myself in my Holy Spirit, in essence, who I am. That we have the opportunity to as born-again born believer Christians to accept the Holy Spirit growth that are within us. And that, that is the, I almost want to say that is the precursor. That is the, um, if you want yeah. to put it that way. Yeah. That is the, that is a precursor that is the basis. Yeah. So now if you have the Holy Spirit within you, mm. if you have the Holy Spirit within you, you have you have the hope of being resurrected with Christ into the eternal life. Because what we see at this moment is temporary. What we see at this moment has been tainted with sin. Mm. But that is not that is not what we, we will be seeing in heaven. That is not what we will be seeing when the Son of Man reveals himself and every eye will see him mm -hmm. and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess mm -hmm. that he is God. So mm -hmm. to say that we have a complete full understanding of who God is and that we have complete revelation of who God is would not be completely accurate until the day the son of man until the day the son of man return should we aspire do we have the holy spirit can we know him absolutely How? we can know him How? we can know him <laughs> to the degree i'll get to that we'll mm. get to that mm. we can know him to the degree mm. that we are able to sacrifice ourselves and when I'm saying this, when I'm saying this is we will know him to the degree that we are willing to lay down our own lives. We are willing, if we are willing to say, okay, you know what? Less of myself, but more of him. Mm. Less of myself, but more of him. Mm. Less of myself, but more of him. Mm -hmm. That is when we start, that is when we start to enter that realm mm -hmm. to know him. But there's also a very interesting other factor that um, God, through his son, Jesus Christ, reveals himself to each and every person, to each and every person, mm. personally. Okay, if you look, if you look at uh, there's a there's a very uh, uh, awesome account in the Word of God where where Jesus was having this discussion with his disciples, and his discussion was, "Who do you say that I am?" You know, he was asking he was asking his disciples, "Okay, well, you've mm -hmm. been with me now for more than a year. Who do you say that I am?" And some said, "Well, you're a prophet." Some say you are this, some say you are, some say you are that, some say you are um, Elijah, some say you are, but listen, listen to the question, because I'm, mm -hmm. this is now answering as to how we get to know him. Mm -hmm. The question is, mm -hmm. are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Sorry. The question, the question is, we need to get to know Yeshua Mashiach through mm -hmm. his spirit. Mm -hmm. Through his spirit, we need to get to know him for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We cannot rely on what other people have told us about him. He's left his he left the word of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. He left the word of God for us. Yes, you do get very, very good um, godly teachers. You do, you mm -hmm. do get prophets that will teach you. But as to how we get to know him, it is only mm -hmm. through his son, Jesus Christ, because no one goes to the Father and except the son draws him. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So there's a personal place in a space where he longs to reveal himself to those mm -hmm. who seek who seek him, who mm -hmm. seek who he is. Mm -hmm. But that is not going to be a revelation from other people or what other people say or what other people think about him. I mean, you can be a Christian and you can go to church and you can see how other Christians act and you can say, well, if that's, you know, if that's how God is, if that's how Jesus is, I want nothing to do with that religion. But as a matter of fact, this is then you're not getting to know him. Then you're not really wanting to know who he is. You're not really wanting to get to know who he is. It's only when you go and sit at the father's feet and you ask him this question you ask him this question and say okay well lord i want to know who you are mm -hmm. reveal yourself to me and mm -hmm. i can give you many ways i can give you many methods i can give you many um pointers and strategies mm -hmm. of how i spend time with the lord mm -hmm. that's but, what you're saying okay but <laughs> that's not going to mean that's not going to mean a whole a whole lot to you because that's that would be my relationship with him, you know. And uh -huh. you might you might even try the same things, mm -hmm. and it might it might not work. Might not you might work. Not, yeah. You might not receive, mm -hmm. you might not receive anything from it. Mm -hmm. but it hmm? Yeah, but it makes sense because it's a personal savior. Yes. So, okay. So he reveals himself uniquely to individuals. He, re he, re he reveals himself uniquely to each individual. But here's the thing. It will never contradict the Bible. what the word is about him. Yeah. yeah. It will never yeah. contradict what the Bible mm. says about him. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So... I almost want to say, if we can turn to Matthew 16, verse 15, this is going to be, this is going to be um, the scripture I, I want to talk about. Matthew about 16, getting, verse. Matthew 16, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Matthew 15, 16. And this is now Jesus. And Jesus asked him, he said, he said to him, okay, but who do you yourself say mm -hmm. that I am mm -hmm. and listen to listen to Simon's Peter listen to Simon Peter's reply he said to him Simon Peter replied you are the Christ the son of the living God mm -hmm. okay this is how Peter answers him and listen to what Jesus replies to that answer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in getting to know him because this is this is paramount to what we need to understand. And then Jesus answered him and said, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. For flesh and blood, men have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. We cannot, we cannot put our relationship with the Lord with mm -hmm. the creator of this universe who operates on a far higher standard of holiness. He operates on a far higher standard of righteousness. He operates on a far hand higher standard of knowledge. We cannot try and fit our perspective of knowing him in a human box. In other words, we cannot look at our human relationships. Mm -hmm. And try and take that as a matrix and try and take that as a framework and pull that through as to knowing God. Because, again, even the question of who is God, he's infinitely higher, he's infinitely wiser, he's omnipotent, he is holy. Mm -hmm. So to, even to, 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 to try and describe him, would be falling short of who he really is. Mm. And one, I do believe, I do believe that at the end of time, when all is said and done, and he does reveal himself, 
in all three the dimensions, the Lamb that opens up the scroll, mm -hmm. the presence of God, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we will, then we will, then we will, um, in essence, mm -hmm. in essence, see the Creator in His fullness. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I hope that answers some of your questions. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. It is very clear, let me just summarize, that God is real. He walked on earth. There's an account. There were testimonials. In fact, millions of testimonials. They were not just written in the Bible because the Bible has very limited content. But if we, if we remember him preaching and going from one town to another for years and years and years, he could have, he, he, I am sure he must have touched millions of lives and a lot of people must have witnessed him. Uh, people who might believed in him at that time, people who might be, who might be skeptic of who he was at that time. But all of these people have an account of who Jesus was when he was on earth. Now, you are true, you're right, that God is a personal Savior and Lord, and that he deals with every person in a personal level. There's no one size fits all when it comes to God dealing with us, because he, he knows us personally. Uh, you know, he knows us individually. He created us uniquely. So only God knows how to relate with us in a way that will give meaning into our relationship with him. Well, I can say this because I have experienced it. Talitha, how about for those who have not yet experienced Jesus, how can they start the walk? You are more expert in this because you've been mm -hmm. into this accelerated Christian education and you have been doing outreaches and overreaches all over the world. So I trust that you have, you're more knowledgeable in imparting an enlightening truth to our friends out there as to how they can start this beautiful walk, this new life in a spiritual paradise with Christ. So, yes, thank you for that question. And that's really important because that is something that is not being preached in Christian circles a lot. Né? And mm. this is the word of how do, how do people who have not had that experience and not walk physically with him on earth, where do they begin? And I'm going to give, I'm going to give one word and that's repentance. Okay. And repentance is not a, a very popular subject amongst Christians because repentance is actually where it all starts. Repentance is the very first message. The very first message when Jesus came into earth and he started his um, Sermon on the Mount, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So I I feel that sometimes we lead people to Christ and we just tell them, okay, you know what, just give your life to Christ and everything will be okay. Yeah. And off, yeah. And off you go. Mm. But in essence, but in essence, that is not that is not entirely the truth. Mm -hmm. We need to start with repentance. We need to start on that base level. And repentance mm -hmm. is not Feeling is not just feeling guilty for your sin. Mm -hmm. Repentance is not just um, something that hands in the ear. Repentance mm -hmm. is not just, you know, something you do once off and and it's done. Like mm -hmm. this sinner's prayer. I'm, I'm sure everybody has has um heard of this sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, will you just pray a simple prayer and then you are right with God? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. If you don't make a conscious choice, if you don't make a conscious choice in your life, mm -hmm. 
Hello? Oh, you got... So, I'm putting right. my... Okay. Um, I You got frozen from... If you don't make a conscious decision, you're right. You got frozen yeah. there. Yeah. So, repentance is a conscious decision each and every person has to make. Okay? Mm -hmm. There are two chairs. There are two chairs. And we are born with we are born with needs. Mm -hmm. We are born with needs. Mm -hmm. And as we grow up, we get this idea that our needs always have to be met. Our needs always have to come first. You know, mm -hmm. our needs are important and we we are we are the center of our own, we are the center of our own universe. That's when we are first met, that's when we are first, first born. And we grow up with this idea that that is all there is to it. We are in charge of our life. We get to make the decisions. We um, we use our free will that the Lord has given to us. And we put ourselves on the throne. We put ourselves on, on the throne. Now, when it comes to repentance and being born again, that is to say, okay, I am not any longer sitting on this throne, but I relinquish, I give away my right. I relinquish and I give away my right to my life, to everything I own, to everything I have, to everything, to everything I am. And I put it in charge of, I put it in charge of the, of the Lord. He is now king. He is now ruler. He is now God of my life, he is on the throne, and I follow. Um, that's the short and long of repentance. To make that transition, to make that transition from I'm in charge of my life, and what I want matters, and what I want goes, and what I want gratifying the flesh. And a lot of Christians don't want to talk about it because they still want to hold on. They still want to hold on. They want to kind of... They want to kind of have a co-pilot with, with the Lord. And mm -hmm. that will never work, you know? That will never work. If we don't come to a point where we repent and we say, okay, Lord, you are master of our life. You are king of our life. You are the author, the finisher of our faith. That is when, and we submit, we submit to what you want. We submit to your word. We submit to your desires. We submit to who you are. That is true freedom. That is true freedom. And that is when we begin to make that paramount paradigm shift of how it's going to be in heaven and how it is currently on earth. Because even currently on earth, a lot of people are so very occupied with being in charge, you know, with, mm. with gathering, being king, being being the king of their own lives. Being in charge yes. of their lives. Yeah. Being in charge of their lives. And mm -hmm. repentance is you need to turn. You need to turn. Mm -hmm. Turn from your own folly. Turn from turn from all of that. And people don't want to hear it because, you know, uh, people have a lot of stuff. People have a lot of dreams. People have a lot right. of aspirations. Mm -hmm. But what does what does the Lord want? What does what does He want? Mm -hmm. So we cannot. We cannot start, and I, I'm saying this with I'm saying this with full confidence. We cannot start to pursue a relationship with a holy God if we have not come to the end of our health and we have not come to that realization that He is God and we are His creation. Mm -hmm. Because if we Find our place and say that he is God and we are his we are his creation and we come to him as our king and we come to him as our father we come to him as uh, you know being in charge of our life then the spirit of adoption that Hebrews partake the spirit of adoption of sonship mm -hmm. of daughtership 
then that spirit of adoption can take place because now we acknowledge God as our father. We acknowledge God as our king. And only then can that spirit of adoption, with adoption which Hebrews talk about, with that Christ, Abba, Father, can take place. And then that relationship can be restored. Then that relationship can can have meaning. And But as, as for as long as we are, um, as we are stuck in our own uh, rulership and reign, that relationship will never really take the effect that it should be because mm -hmm. the relationship he wants to have with us is he wants to be our father. He wants to be our king. He wants to, he wants to fulfill that role of Lord in our lives. Mm -hmm. But if we are resisting it, that relationship is not going to be there. That mm -hmm. relationship is not going to be there. I mean, even if you think about um, in a, in a, even if you think about it in an earthly sense, if somebody wants to mm -hmm. bless you, mm -hmm. but you're resisting the blessing and say, well, you know what, I don't need it. I can do it on my own. Your blessing doesn't mean much to me. I mean, how can that person at the end of the day bless you? You know, how that mm -hmm. how can that person at the end of the day come and give you all that is in their lives and that is in their yeah. that is in their yeah. lives? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we have to, we, in a nutshell, for us to start with a relationship with a God, we need to first of all acknowledge God as the Lord and Savior of our life. We have to dethrone ourselves from our own thrones and let God sit on the throne and uh, and allow Him to move in our lives. But first, it has to start with repentance. So now God is knocking at the door of your hearts. So if you feel the thud in your hearts, my friends, if you feel that vacuum, that thud in your heart, that God would like to have a relationship with you, please follow us in this simple prayer of acceptance that uh, our dear sister Talitha is going to lead us with today amen can i can i just read another scripture for us and it's yes, in john before, before we, we 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 lead them to the sinner's prayer uh please okay. read the scripture yes okay uh john 3 verse 3 says the following and jesus answered me i assure you most solemnly i tell you that unless a person is born again and new from above he cannot even know and be acquainted with and experience the kingdom of God. So John 3, chapter 3 says clearly that there has to be that born again state that we, we need to pursue. And that comes from a repentive heart. And that that is also a work of the spirit to bring a person to that place and space of repentance. But I would say for anybody who's, who's looking on the sideline and saying, but where do I begin my relationship with the Lord? Repentance is paramount. Repentance is key. You mm. need to repent. You need to be born again to pursue that relationship with God. So, mm. yeah. I could pray. Should I pray for them? <laughs> pray. Okay. Um, we will end this with a prayer. Our dear sister is going to lead us into a relationship with God. This is just going to be the beginning. Now, if you Amen. prayed this prayer and you don't have a church, please find a pastor or a church where you can grow. Tell you that. And the Bible. <laughs> yeah, and the Bible. Read the Bible, yes. Now. Yes, Father, I just want to come and I want to bless each and every person watching, Father. I want I want them to know that today you are standing at the door of their hearts. Today is an invitation. It's an open invitation, Lord. It's the cross that has been set open for humanity, Father. The veil has been torn, Lord. They have access 
to the Holy of Holies, Father. You didn't hold anything back, Father, to have a relationship with your children this morning, Lord. And I just pray that wherever they are, whoever they are, Father, that they will respond, that they will respond to the finished work of the cross, Lord, that they will respond to your Holy Spirit, Lord, that they will respond, Father, to you that are calling them higher, to you that are calling them into a deeper, more intimate, more personal, real relationship with you, Lord. And that transcends religion, Father, that transcends, Father, religious acts, Father, but that they will be drawn in to who you are. Father, I ask that you would reveal yourself, that you would reveal yourself, Father, like you did. So many people, Father, in the word, so many accounts, Lord, but that you will reveal yourself to them. And thank you that you are already revealing yourself to them and that they will respond and begin their journey with a personal relationship with you. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. God bless you abundantly. And may we, may this connect, may this virtual connection prosper for the kingdom of God. Thank you so much. We are so honored to have you with us today. And may you guest with us, you know, in in more podcasts to come. Because you've, <laughs> I'm sure you've blessed a lot of people today. I mean, I mean, thank you very much for having me. I'm honored. And yeah. May God please. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.